Hello, I'm Jameson. And I'm John. And together we are the Brother Monkeys. Or so, and I'm Jameson, and I'm John. So we first met in 1980 when I was born, because he's the older brother. Yeah, we're we're real life siblings, and uh, we grew up in the San Fernando Valley in the 1980s, and that's where I met him. And as soon as I met him, we started realizing we had a mischievous bond. Yeah, and uh, we grew up together. We're real life brothers. Uh, we have both of the same parents, John Senior and Kathy. We looked around the world and we got a good look at it and we kind of laughed at it and then we looked at each other and we're like, are you kidding me? You don't have to go if you don't want to. So we started taking steps towards our entertainment career in the manner that people have been exposed to it. I'd say on that surf trip to in the Canary Islands was the first time that we really, I think, got a hold of it, when you say? Yeah, yeah, John was uh, stationed in Germany, and he used to bring me over every summer to visit him in Europe. And we went to surf trips in the Canary Islands, and everyone started calling us Beavis and Butthead, and it became very obvious that we were making fun of everything, and kind of bringing joy and mischievousness to the world. And he was about to get out of the army and we were discussing like what he should do. And it was kind of like, why don't you move home and let's be comedians together. So that's kind of where the career like officially started. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we were in my apartment in Germany and we did uh, some initial screen tests on my handy cam. And we ran a scene from Vanilla Sky and a couple other things. Yeah, Vanilla Sky was one of our favorite films and we started acting things out. And, and we quickly realized with the, the feedback that we were not serious dramatic actors. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, th- although I think we could do that. I think at the, at the time we realized we weren't dramatic actors, but we realized that we were funny yeah. and that we were fearless. And that led us to like a deep calculation of what to do. We were fortunate to have a father who uh, had a high level perspective or he still does and he stuck in there with us as best he could throughout the whole thing which has been it, it's a difficult yeah. thing when somebody starts getting famous it love really you is. dad thanks for helping us <laughs> love out you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kitchen where the brother monkeys prepare a lot of vegan food and a lot of good healthy food it's important to be healthy it's important to eat good food for everybody having been a high-ranking military officer i had a lot of high-level options in my life and so when I was discussing, it was kind of funny to me because I hadn't really seriously considered to run in Hollywood or whatever. And we sat down and decided the best option was to start off in stand-up comedy. Yeah, so we started doing stand-up. Uh, even before he got out of the military, he was doing stand-up. And then I was doing stand-up out here in California. And then he moved out here and we decided to go, you know, together. Yeah, I was, I was moonlighting as a stand-up comedian in uh, Louisville, Kentucky because I was stationed at Fort Knox. And I wasn't sure if the military was going to be cool with it, so I came up with a stage name on the spot for the open mic. It was Johnny Scott. 
and uh, I told Jameson, and then I was like, oh, I'll be Jimmy Ska, and then the Ska brothers were born. Bright lights, big city, and then against all odds, we were on the first wave of internet famous people. We came back to LA, we started doing stand up, and then yeah. we started producing internet content, and yeah. before we knew it, uh, a little site that no one had heard of. Yeah, there was, uh, my friend told me to join the site called MySpace. No. No. MySpace, no. It was like 2004, 2005. He wouldn't get off my case about it. So I finally joined it, right? Then John moves out. We do stand-up comedy. A few months later, John starts getting these migraine headaches. And so he's taken out of, like, the game of, like, live performing. And I figured out oh, dude, they rank these blogs in this, like, top-ranked blog thing, right? And I was giving myself, like, fake clicks, and the more fake clicks I get, the higher you get ranked on the actual blog list, and then you would get a massive amount of real views. Okay, what do we got here? We got friend request. Yeah, I love friend requests, man. Friend requests are always good. Let's see what we got in store today. Oh, good Christ. Let's see what, let's see what this guy's all about. Lend me an ear. I want to be your... Mike, that's, haven't you learned anything? I'm fairly misunderstood. I was the heavyweight champ of the world. I also had the best Nintendo game ever. What, the, what are you talking? What? And so when he was, you know, kind of sidelined by the migraines, we started like auto clicking our blogs, getting ranked high, and then we started to get a lot of like real readers, and then it started taking off on its own, and we realized the power of the internet. This is my office slash studio. A lot of creative work gets done in here. A lot of music, a lot of multimedia, a lot of cool stuff. And simultaneous to that, uh, because of the migraines, and I was having to stay at home, we decided to start shooting at-home short videos, like sitcom formatted webisodes, for no good reason, because we were running our own website when you had to have your own website. And this is before people were doing webisodes. It didn't even make sense. You took my spot. Spot. Why'd you? That's always my spot. Why'd you take my spot? Like you weren't even there, dude. It's part. It's a spot. It's not like this has your name on it or something. You can't just take a man's spot. That was not your spot. It is my spot. Well, I'm there now. It's obviously it's not your spot. It's like I challenge you to a thumb war. What? The hell's a thumb war? We'll settle it. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. You remember that? That's thumb wrestling, dude. It's a thumb war. Well, if you want a thumb war, I'll give you a thumb war. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll prepare and we'll come back and we'll settle it over to Thumb War. Yeah. Fine, I'm going to go train. Yeah. Let's go train. I'm going to get you. I think we started shooting those in November 05 and then February 06, a little site called YouTube opened up and we were like, this is great. We have all these webisodes that we're yeah. creating and we uploaded them to it and we followed the same uh, format as the MySpace to get the market position. And the next thing we knew, we were pioneering webisodes on YouTube and we were on the most viewed page on YouTube every day for like 18 months or something. Yeah, and when you get on the most viewed page back then, you would get, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000 real views in like one day from getting on that list. So it was like the richer, richer getting richer. And we knew that this was the future. And even though everybody was just doing like vlog webcam videos, we started formatting these webisodes. It was kind of like a Seinfeld show called the Scar Brothers Show. We had an opening with a cool song and our logo. Then we had like a three to five minute episode that was like a funny Curb Your Enthusiasm Seinfeld. I'm traveling, I'm traveling. Why? I gotta leave because uh, I just gotta leave. So someone after you? No, 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 no. Some, no one's after me, so someone wants to be my friend. So I gotta so, go. What, on MySpace? I already told you too much, but... What do you mean yeah, you told me too so, 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 so a guy wants to be your friend on MySpace? Yeah, he wants to be my friend, but I don't want to be my friend. So, oh, oh, so for us to deny. No, you cannot. Not with this kind of person. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, look, he already knows too much. Well, he hey, may hey, know where hey, I am. Hey, calm down. Okay. And then we had to close, right? So you could get used to this format. And a lot of people saw us start to do that. And they knew that was the future right away. So we took some flack and got some praise both at the same time. Yeah. The and most important part was that we pumped out about 70 episodes to the tune of about three and a half million views. Yeah. In the early days, which is pretty much unheard of. Some good food. That is good food. Good food. Time to go to bed. Good dream. Are we 
a pioneer of YouTube? Yes, we are. And whether you can document that or not, you were there if you were there and you know exactly who the Scott brothers were and what we did. I think the best people to ask about that would be the people on the OG censorship board at YouTube. Because they are yeah. definitely familiar with the Skull Brothers name. Yeah, all the early people know. All the famous early people. We were all part of the same culture. And uh, yeah. We were the first ones to post a major comedy club stand-up video from the Hollywood Improv. And we were getting so many views on it and it was changing the culture so fast that the improv itself implemented a policy that you cannot film or post videos from the Hollywood Improv based off of us doing that. Yeah, I still have those videos. And it was crazy dealing with that because the, the culture of being an internet star wasn't... Hadn't been established. Hadn't been established yet. So we were like telling people, whoa, we're getting kind of famous here. And, and some people will go, Hey guys, it's just the internet. You need to calm down. It's not that big of a deal. We were like, no, we think this is a big deal. It's kind of a big deal. And it turned out it was. We were able to headline the Hollywood and San Jose Improv Comedy Clubs. We got hired to write for Life and Style Weekly. We were in the same room as A-list celebrities all of a sudden. Yeah. And I think anyone that's gone through the fame train, they'll tell you that it's not just the nature of the exposure or the opportunities, but the awareness of people on you, it actually changes you. It does, yeah, it brings, everything comes to the surface. I mean, it's just energy. Yeah. It's just a <laughs> bunch of energy getting pumped into you. People go like, oh, I wanna be famous. Okay, let's break that down for just a second. No, we, we found that fame is something you have to keep to yourself or people that are in the industry and understand it, um, but that it makes people very uncomfortable and it's, kind of something you just have to, it's your cross the bear, man. Yeah, right. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it really is. And then at the end of that Scott Brothers run, we had a lot of crosses to bear. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody wants to hear you complain about being famous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the monkey high five. Ooh, ah, ah. James and I are both painters, so many of these are original artworks. Some people have uh, power tools and work on cars, and we're artists, so we have paintings and things we work on. So, yeah, so the Scott Brothers, so we learned a lot of things from the Scott Brothers run. We met a lot of high-powered people, and we got like a realistic view about fame, and we decided to retool ourselves, because we crashed out, basically. Yeah, we went method without knowing what that was. Um, we almost legally changed our name to, to Johnny and Jimmy Scott, and... Uh, we kind of like lost ourselves for a bit. We realized we wanted to do things in real life and stop doing internet things. We wanted to have like a real life presence and effect. We were in a, his BMW one night, which he no longer has. And then it was, we were like in the car and we were like, oh, we're, we're brothers, we're brothers, they're monkeys. We're just monkeys, we're all just monkeys. We're like brother monkeys. Oh! We were like brother monkeys. Dude, this is what we gotta be. We gotta be the brother monkeys. <laughs> Uh, we realized that we could do a different form of, you know, what we had just gone through and we could make a lot of the improvements that we wanted to. And a lot of that was about allowing people to feel the real impact of art and like what it means to actually have artistic talent to brighten people's days, expand their minds, make them more social. And then once we came to those conclusions, we looked around Santa Clarita and benefited my West Point education and having worked on a general staff planning a war, I had all this very high strategic mindset. And I looked around Santa Clarita and surveyed it with Jameson and we were like, dude, Santa Clarita pretty much fits the bill for us to do all this type of entertainment that we're developing. And that's that's really what we began with. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, so we started studying high flow intersections, started studying where there was consciousnesses that we could influence and we started doing outrageous things and dressing in outrageous outfits, dancing on cars, you know, walking on the sidewalk and like and like doing wax on, wax off to like traffic that was going by. Just things people had never seen, twirling t-shirts and like just, it started growing on itself. And as we started to run into some pushback, then we started having conversations with each other about if people are fighting being different so hard, there has to be a lot of value, so we need to do this even more. Yeah, yeah, the, I remember the first instance of that was uh, we were on Haskell Canyon, 
and we were doing a performance and two cop cars rolled in from the opposite side of the roads, stopped us and got in our grill about stuff in a very non-friendly way. Grill means face. Grill means face. At that point we realized, oh, this is valuable. And that day, on a day in which we probably just would have gone back to our house after that Haskell Canyon walk, because of the visit and we realized it's valuable, we walked all the way to City Hall and back and just made a point of this is going to be a freedom parade. That ethos kind of just stuck with us. Literally the opposite of what they were trying to convey to us was actually happening. So they were like trying to stop us. And when we were, oh, oh okay, all we were going to do is walk down the street. But since he tried to stop us, we're going to do it for four hours today. And they fought it with every ounce of power they had. <laughs> People wanted us dead, people wanted oh, us right. banned, a couple they people tried us. both. They hated us so, <laughs> so hard. So bad. For so, they hated us as long as they could hate us. And we had drinks thrown at us at 50 miles an hour. We had people trying to run us over on the sidewalk. We had police regularly putting us in back of police cars, trying to figure out reasons <laughs> that they're allowed to arrest us. They knew that we were reprogramming the iOS of society itself, and they felt like there should be laws to stop us, but every time they checked, there wasn't one that they could fall back on to stop us. And it, it, took, all, it took all of my education, it took all of our father's legal education to, to understand how to navigate these things. You know, and to, to the people's credit, once we made this breakthrough against the tidal wave of people trying to stop us, Things flipped. The cops went from putting us in the back of cop cars to playfully turning on their lights and playing with us in the streets and stopping us and being like, oh, hey, you know, aren't you guys the brother monkeys? And, you know, things did turn around at a certain point, but oh my God, they nobody wanted it to turn around, that's for sure. We became a known quantity, and when that tipping point happened, everything changed, but it felt like that point would never get there, and it took everything in our souls to get to that point. Well, God, we're smoothing it over with security, the authority, the man, you know, the man, the establishment. See, you work within the system to make the system more fun, and then the system's better for everybody. As the resistance le lessened, because we were like a, an alarm clock that people hadn't set for themselves going off in their lives, and that can be very annoying, and so we understood that. But as more people were waking up because of our actions, then more harmonious, like joyous, appreciative energy started to come up and especially the kids like we always hear from the adults because the adults are set in their ways and, and, and they don't really want this sort of nonsense going on but the kids loved it and the kids understood what we were doing and we had a teenager years later come up to us and tell us he said you know if we were driving home in the van with our mom and she saw you guys on the side of the road and she started yelling at you guys we smiled in the car because we knew we weren't going to get it at home and I always remember that. I'm on my bed, 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 i am on my bed 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 i am on my about a lot more than just dressing differently and going out you know, to coffee shops and making people look at people with giant orange costumes or clown wigs or whatever. It became so much bigger than what we were doing. We realized we, we had to change the society and we had to change the world that we lived in because we didn't like the amount of conformity and the amount of just like blankness that was going on. And we, we wanted to paint the canvas of reality. Limp Race 3000, which is an animated feature we pitched to, uh, here, I'll show you, break that out behind the glass. We made this with an Emmy Award winner, Ben Adams, of the regular show fame. Great show, Blimp Race 3000. Pitched it to Disney, DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. Hell of an experience. I recommend it. But let's go back inside where the action is with Jay Money and Jameson, our real-life brother. This is a Jameson original, Hollywood. You might have seen this in the Brother Monkey Show. Available on the set of the Brother Monkey Show on YouTube. Fantastic, great show. Eric Andre show with two middle-aged brothers who have been living in the same suburban house for way too long. See what happens when we get way too turned up on the Brother Monkey Show. Now we're gonna bring back the Jay Money, front of the DJ booth. Why don't you take handle of the tool, Jay Money? Oh, what's over here at Monkey?
Rocky Mountain dude over there in the rest of the duties. Let's take you to the middle room over the hallway. You ever seen a hallway before? Dude, we got a hallway. We got lights on the ground, first of all. You gotta feel like you're in Tron City. You gotta live fun, man. You gotta live fun. Monkey Mountain fun is number one, you know what I'm saying? Beads on the hallway, dude, make you feel like 60s hippie vibe. It's super dope. Kind of separates the rooms. We like that. You know, you gotta get a little Hawaiian lay here. Monkey at Monkey Mountain. Would it be Monkey Mountain without a monkey? Probably not. You got paintings on the walls. So why was SCV the place we chose to enact these uh, artistic theories? Mainly because it's where we lived in a house that our father provided for us. And so we just found ourselves here. We're here. This place sorely needs it. Here's the thing too. Is I had lived in Europe for four years and my brother had come over and we were well traveled. So we had been exposed to a lot of culture. I've been to 30 plus countries. And one of the things that we identified about Santa Clarita, because we've lived here off and on since 1987, was that Santa Clarita had no cultural identity. It was this, at the time, like quarter million person, very corporate, very soulless sort of entity that was growing and it was brand new. And we realized that we were in this blank cultural space that was just begging for some color to be put into it. Maybe we just lucked out due to time and circumstance, but we happened to be in a city and we happened to have the resources and the skills and experience where they matched up to this sort of blank canvas. And we figured, let's go try it, dude. I mean, we're artists and we're here, let's do it. Maybe something good will happen. Our time in Europe showed us what a rich, rich culture is. And we're so close to Hollywood and we're in the LA dome that we just wanted people to start sharing in that culture because you know, we're economically in the Hollywood zone and there's so many entertainment industry people that live here. We wanted people to, to quit acting like we lived in Nebraska. Yeah, Santa Clarita in particular is a very interesting city. You know, you're only 20 miles as the crow flies from Hollywood. But people out here do act like they live, you know, in the middle of the country and that we're almost completely separate of California, we're separate of Los Angeles. And we wanted to remind people, like, look, we're actors, we're doing auditions from Santa Clarita, we're, we're in the Hollywood district, like, you know, two, <laughs> yeah. three days a week. And, and, you know, our proximity to Hollywood and, and L.A., it helped us to be able to do what we did in Santa Clarita because in one aspect we would do our act here in Santa Clarita take the vibes that we took, mixed bag of them. Uh, and then we would go to Beverly Hills, let's say, and we did it, and they would put us on national television. So they were reinforcing the fact that what we were doing was in the spirit of entertainment and that it was good. And then when we would come back to Santa Clarita to do it, even though we were taking some hits, you know, we knew that we were doing the right thing. Yeah, we would go through some pretty intense uh, things on the streets here, and then, like, talk to ourselves and be like, dude, is this, what's, like, are we doing something wrong? Is, yeah. Like, I, it feels like we're just bringing good vibes to people. And then we would go to Beverly Hills and they throw us on TMZ. We're here to talk about whether LeBron's gonna go to the Lakers. We'll start it off with the stuff that matters. Matters. Oh, okay. And that's where we started to analyze society itself and the differences of societies. And we basically became sociologists yeah. because we had so much data we were coming back almost like scientists, not like artists. And we were like comparing like the way that people were acting very scientifically. It was very interesting. At that point, we started to realize that we were actively engaging in the progression of the culture here in Santa Clarita. You know, it was a beneficial trip for us. It wasn't just like, we weren't just giving it to Santa Clarita. It was, there's a connection that happens and the, the learning was happening both ways. And it was, you know, for me personally, it was exciting because at West Point, when I studied there, I was studying in a lineage of people that, the, that had made history regularly, and they told us that they were training us to make history. And I go, oh man, I'm, I may be the first West Pointer to ever really be an entertainer doing exploration and progression of the culture. So it's very personally satisfying. And the fact that I got to do it with my brother uh, was amazing. And it still is amazing because he's super, he's a genius, this guy. And so it was rad that he was a not in the system educated genius. And I was a in the system genius. And then we were working together with these two different 
sets of mentalities and we were achieving these really epic results is very exciting very exciting i mean very difficult but very exciting yeah did you ever seen a memory foam bed before you ever seen a memory foam bed before i don't think so you got lights things to turn on and off look at rush poster new beat font shout out to my roommate shelby dude look at this nickelodeon guest pass walt disney this is when i pitched a cartoon to disney do you know how hard that is do you know how hard that is you don't get a lot of sleep the night before you pitch a cartoon to disney your life could change what? We got more paintings, we got roommates, walls. We do our own soundproofing around here with blankets. Dude, you get soundproofing, life's way better. Dude, we got John's room here, the master bedroom. It comes with the butler. Look at this, the YouTube, the Johniverse. Check it out, some dope vids, you might like them. Dude, we got lights, color changing lights. You gotta make your own fun in life. These things are like 12 bucks, buy some. Look, and then you got John's painted car out here, look at this. Legendary Monkey Mountain, the painted RAV4. Anything can be fun. Anything can be fun. A number one. You shoot good things out of a gun. It doesn't have to be death. You don't have to smoke meth. You can have just a good time. How did people react to us when we started shooting up in fame? It was a mixed bag, but it was mainly severe reactions with a few exceptions, I'd say. Uh, I instantly lost friendships. Uh, people that couldn't handle it. Some people, man, some, it's so there was, there was some seriously like unbelievable reactions. Oh my God. Like, at one point, our, our mother, had she'd been attempting to be an author and she started telling people that she was writing our blogs. Yeah. Because they were so popular. Behind our back, we didn't even know. Yeah, there was, there was, a, lot of, there was a lot of weird stuff that happened. People got manipulative. There was even like third order effects. We had a comedy manager and she just straight up had con men started coming at her trying to get access to us. Yeah, th there's not getting rich from it and still staying in the middle class with all the connections you have it is a very powerful thing to happen. A-list celebrities that they make it and they get $5 million for Warner Brothers and then they can go put themselves on a house on the hill and kind of deal with it, you know, that's one thing. We didn't have that. We were getting famous and we were stuck exactly where we were in regular society. Yeah. We weren't being removed from anything. So it was, it was very intense for people to be around this ascension of fame, but yet we weren't showing up in Ferraris. We didn't have any like real personal financial upgrades. Yeah, we didn't but have any material markers. Right, there weren't material markers. So that's what makes internet fame, I think, in particular, so hard to deal with. We had dinner in the same room as David Duchovny and Kim Kardashian, and then we came back to Saugus. Yeah, I mean, how do you deal with that? It's like your neighbors are contractors and you're having dinner with celebrities and you have nobody out here to relate to you. That's, it's very difficult to deal with. And then even dealing with other artists made it very difficult because we were getting an amount of exposure that they only dream about. And that's the problem, they only dream about it because when you do get the exposure, it's not a cakewalk. There's all these weird responsibilities and filterings and things. You end up being this sort of macro level psychoanalyst for people that you've never met just based on energy reads yeah. and you can't necessarily articulate it to the other artist and so it's strained all the relationships it's really difficult to deal with it's really really difficult to deal with even when one person asks for a selfie with you for example they're putting all their hopes and dreams on you they're they're like oh my god oh my god i can't believe i'm meeting you you're inspiring me to go after something big in my life and that's like a two minute interaction. And then you go to another one of those where somebody puts all their hopes and dreams on you. It's so intense to go through. And then you go home with all that energy on you. And this is before ever anybody knew that internet fame is a real fame and it's just as real as anything else. So we weren't being taken seriously, but we had all the responsibilities of being famous. Got you. We got arts, we got the arts, we got the arts. We watch, we watch movies in the backyard. It ain't that hard. Look at this, you got baby heads. I don't even know if you covered this before, but check it out. 
Painting most of this ourselves. The famous baby head of Santa Clarita is at Monkey Mountain. It's at Monkey Mountain. You have Orangina. Seating, very important. Seating, you gotta have hella heads up in here around a fire pit. You can really burn off some vibes when you got a fire going on. Easy style, easy. Let me get a quick fire for you. Yeah, you light them up and then you, you, you sit around the fire. And you, you think about your life. You, you think about your life. You go, what does my life mean? The fire will tell me what my life means. We were the most famous people that people didn't know were famous. Yes. Yes, that's exactly it. It's like the entertainment world, and, and also like as far as America in general, we feel like America can all be Hollywood. We can all live like an open-minded artistic lifestyle wherever you are, it's our, it's our culture. Yeah, we're just trying to promote freedom and uh, thinking for yourself and individual action and responsibility and just reminding everybody that, yeah, we're America, we're a free nation and, you know, enjoy your freedom. And part of that means that you got to like not fall asleep at the wheel and be a conformist. Yeah. And part of enjoying your freedom is realizing there's some people out there that don't want you to have it. So you have to fight for it a little bit, take some flack. But we're here to tell you that if you do that for long enough, you will become a known quantity and you will receive special freedom treatment because people will go, oh, this person, this person is a person that knows they're free and they fight for it. So I'm going to allow them a, a certain amount of freedom that they earned. You know, you have to earn your freedom. Yeah, you do. You really do. It's not given to you. It's 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 an idea that you can start with, but actual like on the ground freedom, you have to earn that. <laughs> That's fun. That's the fun of jam right there. Is you just you find new stuff you didn't know you had in you or in the room. Thanks for jamming with us here in Monkey Mountain. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, well, what, what was our goal with the, with the online content was to give an accurate entertainment representation of what we were doing. And then to me, the point of what we were doing in real life was that our entertainment product wasn't just a bunch of talk. Our entertainment product was representing the actual ideologies and artistic intentions that we were enacting in our real life thing. We were hoping that if we changed enough people in real life, that for sure that was good enough on its own, but that it might lead them to our entertainment product and realize that if they wanted to put us up into the global Hollywood entertainment realm, that we were real. That like, this wasn't just a couple of actors going up in the same lines. These were people who we do that we're for real, that we want to go out and actually entertain people and that we mean it and that our methods actually work. Woo! Front monkeys! Monkey Mountain, California! Can you feel us? Pun is number one, guys. Okay, my main takeaway is that we're all unified. We're all connected, whether we like it or not. Yeah, and usually we don't like that. <laughs> usually we don't like that fact that everything we do affects everybody. And it sends a pinballing around of reality. And as much as you want to think you just going in and getting the coffee and going back to your car doesn't matter. You keep your head down and don't talk to anyone. Everything affects everything, whether you like it or not. It's principle of the universe. So I would say my takeaway, yeah, everything is connected. And the more exposure that you get, the more principles of the universe just show themselves to you. So if you want to learn about the universe, go do public things, go be different. And like Jim Carrey says, you know, if you are different, you have a chance to be original. What would I say to the person who's watched all this and they still hate us or hate me or just, uh, I would say maybe that hatred is toward yourself. But nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> it's not toward yourself. You're perfect. <laughs> and we had the audacity to think that we could have the most effect anyone's ever had on the city and may ever have. 
And then they called it Awesome Town. So I figured someone had to put the awesome in the Awesome Town. And that was us. SCV needed some lads to stand up, and we were the lads that stood up. Hey, San Clarita. You're welcome. Also, I'd like to thank everybody along the way. If I haven't, if I haven't like told people, thanks for putting up with my good stuff and my bad stuff. Yeah, thanks for putting up with my good stuff, my bad stuff, or the in-between stuff, the weird stuff. Thank you for putting up with Jameson and everything I've put everybody through. And, uh, you know, thanks for the love, compassion, support. Couldn't have done it without everybody. Um, it's not true, you don't do it by yourself. Not at all, it takes so many people along the way to help you, you know, become yourself. So thank you to everybody. Yeah, love everybody. you, love you very much. I'd like to be a movie star, TV movie star, write and produce, work in Hollywood, typical stuff. And I would like to run the world's first 12 foot horse track. 12 foot horses and above only. Now I'd like to be a successful entertainer. I would love to be a successful entertainer. I would love to get parts. I would love to write stuff, to write stuff. Uh, you know, be part of just amazing ensemble casts. Uh, maybe like even paint stuff, you know? Be a celebrity, let's be celebrity personalities. Let's, we would we like to be so, on. we would like we to be, be celebrity, celebrity personalities. personalities. We'll show up on your talk shows, your sporting events, things, your bar mitzvahs, your quinceañeras. Your taco trucks, your barcades, whatever it is, if it's a good time and you're willing we'll to pay us, up. we'll show up. We'll make it entertaining. We'll make it fun. It'll be a good vibe. Lots of good selfies. And you stick a bunch of cash in our pockets. Cash. Attack it back to John Ball. We're in, baby. How you enjoying your Monkey Mountain experience? Can you imagine a couple of over freaking crazy middle-aged brothers live here full time? Well, it's true. It's true. We do. And we're making dope stuff and we love sharing it with you and hey welcome to our crib you can always fantasize that you live here yourself you can always just get a little oasis of freedom and creativity and inspiration that we like to call monkey mountain and it's our lives and we love sharing it with you so i hope you've enjoyed your busy year in monkey mountain california and you know something i don't like in the crib shows is when people at the end they're like they're like and now get the hell out of here i don't like that i'm a little more genteel it's more like Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. You're welcome back anytime. Fun is number one. Fun is number one. Have fun in your life. Have fun. All you gotta do is have fun. Fun is number one. For the monkey back, huh? <laughs> Hell yeah. Fun's number one, baby. <laughs>